I'd like to call this meeting to order, uh, meeting of the Buildings and Grounds Committee meeting. Um, Buildings and Grounds Committee, um, as requested at the last meeting um, to hear a presentation on solar power options. Um, and up first, a public comment. If there's any public comment. Seeing none, um, let's see if we have, Tina is there, Tina, can you hear me? Uh, we're waiting on one more board member. No problem, I can be happy to wait for a little while. She was supposed to be here in person and said she uh, would have to zoom in, so give her just a second. Seems strange hosting a committee meeting in an empty room. I'm sure you're used to it. That's where you uh, you work from. <laughs> well, it, I I try to when I'm doing like regular board meetings go go to the actual in person meeting because I think it's a little bit easier for people or people are a little more comfortable asking questions and all of that when you're in person. But uh, a lot of times with committee meetings I do on Zoom, so I got I got I've got practice with both. Yeah, <laughs> still hard to get used to for me. Yes, I'm sure. Are your board meetings in person these days or are you? No, no, yeah. 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 And having the option certainly makes it nice to. Yes. I, I can scoot off and go to the lake and still listen to the board meeting. That's right. Well, especially you're, you're uh, quite a, uh, a ways away, so having the opportunity to do a Zoom also helps with uh, people traveling or if you're coming from a from a distance away from the meeting. Yeah. How many board members do you have? We have two that are supposed to be in attendance on this. Yeah, but uh, how many? Oh, five. Board members? Yeah, five. Yeah. Five. Yeah. And Josh isn't feeling too well, I hear. No, I spoke with them this morning and he was struggling. Yeah, that's too bad. Yeah. But it's funny, the last week I had a presentation with um, Matt Awaska and their superintendent got COVID right before. So the assistant superintendent or somebody else was managing the board meeting. Right. He, was, he was zooming in, but it seems like it's the way right now. So it's pretty. The new trend. But yeah, those who uh, avoided it for two years are getting it now, so. Yeah. I'm glad I got it right up front early on and out of the way. <laughs> well, <laughs> I'm, I'm still, uh, I have avoided it. So I'm hoping yeah. to keep it that way. Yeah, my wife has too. She's still running from it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, I suppose we probably should. Move on, I guess, what we've got. Um, I'll just introduce Tina. Tina is with Revision Energy. Um, she presented a, a proposal to the superintendent and I um, a few weeks back over some solar options that are, are presented by her company, which is a main owned, uh, main based company. Um, and um, I guess I'll just turn it over to you, Tina, and let you explain. <laughs> sure, I'll, I'll share my screen. I have a little PowerPoint presentation that I'll share with you.
Can you see my screen now? Yeah. All right, great. So as um, you were saying, one of the things I like to do is talk a little bit about our company first. Uh, since 2019, when the, the solar laws were um, changed in Maine, it really created a lot of interest and opportunity in out-of-state companies to come to Maine and to build solar. And so uh, one of the things that uh, we all know is we're getting bombarded with offers at home and also at, at our place of employment. So I like to talk a little bit about revision and what kind of sets us apart from our, our competition and also to kind of share what our values are. So we are a, a local Maine company. We started with humble beginnings and Liberty Maine with just two guys in a garage. And we've now um, have over 300 employee employee owners in revision and we've expanded. We have offices in Liberty still in South Portland and also some offices in New Hampshire and also Massachusetts. And we became a fully employee owned, I think in 2017. We're a certified B Corp. In the last two years, we've been uh, identified as uh, best for the world B Corps, which means we are in the top 5% of B Corps um, in, in the world on, on our certification score. And the scores um, are representative uh, in part by our sustainability efforts, but also in large part by uh, the, the way we work and um, look out after our employees. So we're really proud of that B Corp status. Uh, the company does a lot of outreach in the community and it, you know, partners with um, main organizations to help advance causes that uh, match our values. Um, we have, um, oh, I thought I had another slide on here. We have one of, we have done over 10,000 um, clean energy systems in Maine. And our company was founded in 2003. So since 2003, over 10,000 um, um, clean energy systems in Maine. And we are the number one rated solar installer in New, Le New England for rooftop installations. Revision is, is considered a vertical company. So we do um, the, the engineering, the procurement, the and the construction of these arrays. We build and, and then we maintain them for the life of the contracts when we do these um, um, offsite arrays. I'd like to share a little bit about our core values because we're always looking to align with companies that um, have similar values that as we do. And the values that we have um, coming from a school perspective align really well uh, with what schools are trying to accomplish. And of course, the one that stands out to me uh, in is the learning uh, value that we have is just to educate everyone with knowledge and skills to change the world. And, um, you know, thinking about the, my role in, in this, I come from an education background. I was a teacher and uh, an administrator for, for over 30 years before I um, started working for Revision. And, you know, our, our, our mission is the same. Our, our goal is to educate people about what opportunities they are are in solar and the impact that it makes on the environment when we make decisions that are um, helping us to reduce our dependence on fossil fuel. Um, and of course, also stewardship. We talk a lot about the importance of kids seeing our schools, school leaders making decisions that not only, you know, impact their future, edu their education um, and the future job opportunities, but also the environment that we're leaving them so that they can kind of live and enjoy the Maine that we all grew up um, enjoying. So in 1711, uh, in, in, 19, in 2019, LD 1711 was passed. And this law enabled schools and municipalities and businesses to buy into to this uh, net energy billing credit program. So this is a state run program and annually the PUC um, prices out the cost of net energy billing credits and th this law uh, puts into place the opportunity for us to buy these credits at a, a 
price below the market value, so at a reduced price. And the way that these work is there's usually solar panels typically offsite um, it, for the larger arrays. You have the, the solar, it goes through an inverter and a meter, which is capturing the, the amount of um, kilowatt hours that are being um, created from this from the solar panels. And they're, they're, they go to the grid and, and um, turned into what we call net energy billing credits. So net energy billing credits are like a monetary credit. And we like to talk about it similar to, um, uh, similar to getting a gift card because you see these credits right on your uh, monthly electric bill. So you still get your Versant uh, electric bill or your CMP bill um, if you're in CMP territory. And you will see that so if you, you know, we talk about it, if you think about yourself heading into Hannaford to buy, um, to buy groceries and somebody offers you a hundred dollar gift card for Hannaford for $85, and then you can go into Hannaford and spend a hundred dollars of, um, on the products that are available at Hannaford. And when you go up through the register, you're still gonna see the price of each of the items that you bought. And then you will see this uh, or be able to use this, this monetary credit to reduce the cost of those items. And so at the end of the day, you'll owe Hannaford much, uh, much um, reduced price. And this works the same way. So you would buy monetary credits at a reduced price, and then they would show up directly on your Versant bill. And uh, so you go from having one bill that you pay, which would be Versant now, to having two bills, one for your net energy billing credits and one for your, for your, um, for, for your utility. And um, at the end of the day, when you combine those two, you see what your savings is. And here's an example of just what I was just saying. So you can see if you, if for qualifying municipalities, um, schools, you can see the offset. If you, it, it, savings are usually between, for us are between 10 and, and about 18% right now, depending on the load. And so this is an example, if you're saving that like 15%. Before I go on, does anybody have any questions? How does it affect, um, I guess if the load changes, how does that play into this? Yeah, so you are agreeing to buy into a, a certain amount of your load into these credits. So it shows up as a dollar amount. And so you're gonna see when I talk about our proposal that you want to, you want to purchase the amount of net energy billing credits that you think you're gonna need, but not more than you're gonna need. So you don't wanna head into Hannaford with a $200 gift card if you can only spend $20. Um, the good news for this is that the credit, the, the, the money does roll over from month to month. So in the spring and summer, uh, when solar is being the, um, electricity from solar is being generated at, at its highest level, you may not, that may be your lowest time of needing them because in the summer school's not in session, right? So they will show up as credits. And then in the winter, when you're needing more than you're generating, they, you will use those as they build up and they do expire after a year. So that's why you want to choose your load that is a little bit less than what you expect to need so that you have buffer as your needs change. And, right. I'll, and I will talk about that a little bit when we talk about your savings. Any other questions? So this, can you see this? Because I do have it blown up a little bit larger on the next slide. Um, can you see this okay? Or is it, would you like to see it at a large, in a larger setting? I can see it. Yeah, okay. Oh. And, could, could I see it a little bit bigger? Because I'm yeah. on my phone. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, 
I'll just talk a little bit about what this looks like. So the, the left side, there's a section called net energy billing proposal, and then estimated savings and then utility costs. So I'm gonna cover all three of those sections um, in an enlarged uh, version for you. Um, so you can see the school district spends annually around $94,000 in electricity. And at a, at a um, if you, we recommend that you offset only about 85% of that so that you have room for fluctuations in what your needs are over the course of a contract. This gives you a really nice buffer. And it's our conservative uh, way of making sure that you don't overbuy. Some districts, to the school board would decide how much they would want to offset. And like uh, most school districts that I've worked with have gone with 85%. One school district said, no, we'd, we'd like to go with 90% because we believe our electricity use is going to increase. And we, um, and we believe the price is going to go up. So you want to offset as much as you can because you're saving money when you do. But 85% um, is a nice conservative number to consider. So we, with that figure, you would be trying to offset about 79,000, 70, about $80,000 worth of your electricity load. I used last year's utility prices because I have last year's utility costs. So we want to compare apples to apples to make sure you get the right size um, project. And so you can see here that's 14 cents. And um, that would require you to have about 559,000 uh, net energy billing credits to cover that $80,000 worth of load. We are offering a 15% discount, which means you'd get each of those net energy billing credits for just over 12 cents. If you look here, that means you'd save just about $12,000 a year. And over the life of the contract, you'd save $277,000. And again, we use a pretty conservative approach to determine how what your savings is, because our goal is um, to make sure we don't make we don't over promise. And so this next um, section talk, uh, I'm going to talk through this a little bit so you can understand how we come up with that two hundred seventy seven thousand dollar savings. So. Um, we build in a 2% um, escalator in the pricing because the average electricity rates have gone up 2.5% over the last 30 years. So we, instead of doing 2.5%, which is average, we've made a much more conservative estimate by saying, well, what if they, we're going to assume they're only going to go up 2%. And so when you have years like this one where they jump 80%, of course, it, um, it, it makes your savings significantly more than what, what you'd expect. But again, we're looking at long-term trends so that we can provide them the safest estimate to you that we believe will be probably under-promised and you'll, you'll save more, but it's a good, it's a good starting point. And then you, we also have built in what we call an annual D-rate. So as solar panels, um, age, they are a little bit less efficient. And this 0.5% is the uh, industry standard for what you can expect for decrease in efficiency after 20 or 30 uh, year old panels. So that's also built in. And people will often ask me, well, what happens in the snow, right? Like when it's snow covered, you know, or if there's other um, cloudy days, and the, all of that, all of those figures are built into what we believe will, um, this, this array will produce for electricity. And at, actually every region has a certain figure that you put into a formula for that. So if, we, if you had an array that was up in Fort Kent, there would be expected to be more snowy days than an array that's in Hamden, Maine. Um, and there would be more snowy days there than there would be if there was an array in Portland, potentially. So, so all of those are built in, and this is a, a conservative number, but one that we believe is will be quite accurate. And with 20 years of experience, we found uh, this process to be surprisingly accurate or, um, or it, it if it's off, it's always often to the benefit to, to the consumer. So that's, um, that's what we want. Any, anybody have any questions about how that this works or even, you know, like that's where we get this 
this chart you can see on your um, right hand side here to to show your $277,000 savings. Um, one of the, I guess, one thing I'm just curious, like how it plays into is, you know, we have an elect, we have a contract for your contract for electricity, which is, was a, was a low, you know, low rate, um, which expires in November of this year. Yes. Um, and I know it's going to be a significant increase to us. Yes. Does that affect, how does that affect this when we renew our contract? So you can have a third party supplier. Do you have constellations or main power options? Do you? Uh, Constellation. We got we go through main power options, but Constellation was the provider. Yeah. So a lot of our a lot of our um, school districts use Constellation, and in there, I think it's on page three, about halfway down. You can see there's a clause that allows you to join Solar, and there's language in you know there's language in there. So you will still say they you know when you if you have a third party supplier that's not a barrier to you joining a solar array and getting this reduced price um uh credits okay because yeah, there's language in there but yeah a lot of schools are seeing that they're you know when these contracts come due they're seeing really big increases and that's what's driving a lot of people to to look into this option now um and so be, the array that we would target for your school district is in Hamden. And um, that's one of the things that we put high value on is we, we always say we have a guaranteed placement clause. So if you sign with us, we actually have a project that we can place you in and that has gone through an interconnection process already been approved. The Hamden project um has is already almost full and so about it's probably been three or uh, three or four weeks now the the um investor has given us the go ahead to start construction so that that project is supposed to start construction this month and um and so you're on the tail end we do have a first come first serve so the first companies that sign, you know, the first organizations that sign in will get it. And when the, the load is gone, the load is gone. Right now we have um, um, three school districts and one town that we're speaking with. And three of the four of you could fit in, in this array. So we feel, I feel pretty confident that if you guys decided to go forward, we'd be able to place you in the, the Hamden array, which will, it will be uh, generating, you know, credits um, relatively soon. You know, it, it probably takes uh, probably a t early 2023 would be when the credits uh, would start flowing to the school district who signed into this project. This is the only project we have in Versant Territory right now, uh, or Bangor Hydro Versant Territory right now. Um, if you didn't make it into this one or didn't sign up for this one, we, you know, we're a main company. We've been doing solar for a long time. So we believe there'll be future projects, but the legislature have, has changed the laws twice recently. It changed them in uh, November, basically reducing the size of future projects to two megawatt projects instead of five, which isn't a, a big deal for us because we, like I said, we've been doing, we do the smaller projects all the time. But um, a couple of weeks ago, the legislature ch changed. Oh, and the other thing in, in November is they grandfathered everything in. So if it was in the interconnection queue, which are, we have a bunch of projects that are in safe harbor for that. But a couple of weeks ago, they changed the rules again, and they're having convert. And in this new um, legislation, if construction hasn't started by September 1st, there is going to be new new changes and regulations. So a lot of projects won't go forward. This one will because of construction starting now. But um, I'm not sure when the next project would be for us in, in this territory. And um, so it's pretty time sensitive if um, Millinocket is interested. Um, we, like I said, we believe a lot of the out of state companies will not get their projects off the ground just because the regulations are, are going to make it less lucrative than maybe it had been under the, the LD 1711. Um, but right now we feel pretty good that you're, you know, you're in good shape um, to fit into this uh, project if you, if you decide that is in your best interest. Mm -hmm. How many arrays do you have in Maine currently? Well, 
Um, I'm pretty new to the company, so I, I'm not sure if I can tell you everything, but I know in the last few years, there have been 14 arrays, been uh, larger size arrays have been put up in Maine and revision, we built seven of those. So seven, seven of them were ours. Um, you know, like I said, we're number one in rooftop solar and we've done a lot, lot of, um, you know, uh, a lot of commercial projects uh, as well as these offsite ones. But I think if what you're talking about is the projects like this in, in Hamden, I think that number, I, I believe that number is seven. Okay. So again, just, uh, you know, what, what we talk a lot about is, is the value of number one, our our commitment to Maine and that we, when, if you sign in with us where we consider these life, lifetime partner partnerships, uh, these contracts are for 20 years and uh, revision oversees the maintenance of these um, arrays for the life of the array. Um, the other thing that, you know, we feel like is if you have other interests in the future, say you want to do an on-site solar project to augment, you know, the additional load, that we're a company that would be able to do that. Uh, the legislature has also just um, just put into law that schools are going to need to transition to electric buses, and so there's a, a timeline for that. And so you know we're anticipating electricity needs going up. We we do have an electric vehicle department. We don't do anything with buses, but we do the charging stations. So, um, you know, we feel like once we're working with you, we would support you in, in any of your efforts to, you know, um, reduce your dependence on, on fossil fuel. And, um, you know, one of the things that I would say is the one concern that all districts have is, you know, oh, we're signing in for a 20 year contract. That's a little bit scary. I signed in the school district I worked in into an array before uh, before I retired. And, you know, I had that same concern. And um, one of the things that I've come to realize is actually that long-term savings is to the benefit of the school district. So when you are signing in for a percent off, it doesn't matter if prices go up or go down, um, you're going to save money. So, you know, the percent, it used to be that there was like a fixed rate that you'd sign into, and then there'd be an escalator. And so you kind of had to worry about what what that number compared to the market, but now you don't because it's a percent off savings. The contracts are um, have reduced the way the contracts are written have reduced the risks for school districts and municipalities. Um, and then um, the other thing is if you know uh, by having the, these contracts, what it is is that it's it's security for the investor who's built, you know, spent spending a million dollars to build the array, but it's also security for you because what it means is they can't bump out a, a, a school system or a, another organization because in 10 years they can get um, someone to sign on for, for a better number for them. So it gives both sides um, that security. And, um, the the solar panels have a 25 year life uh, uh, 25 year warranty, and they have a 40 year life expectancy. So these contracts run for 20 years, and then um, if the school they they have a clause in there that you can extend it five years if you choose to, and then another five years if you choose to. But both parties have to agree to those extensions for them to to occur. So it's potentially a 30 year um, savings that you can get through um, this program. And there's just a couple of examples that we like to share that we're proud of. Um, Revision had for Maine's first multi-town solar project. And uh, this was a four megawatt array. And it included, you know, towns from Rockland, Rangeley, Dover, Foxcroft, and um, Topsom and Vassalboro. So you see, we're really working with um, towns all across the state of Maine. And um, we also had our, the first public school solar project, which is right here in my backyard. I live in Livermore, uh, Livermore Falls, South there Farm. And this was a five megawatt array. And you can see, you know, Mount Blue Regional School District, which is RSU 9, Farmington area. 
um, Jay Livermore Falls in Livermore for our issue 73, Camden Hills, um, and then Five Towns CBS and Hope Elementary School. So this one um, actually was delayed during COVID by like a year. Just went online, I think in November. And so these schools, I saw the superintendent from Mount Blue and he said, he said, wow, you way underestimated what we were gonna save, of course, because prices have gone up. Um, and he said, they're really excited. They, he had told me they'd save like $44,000 in two months. Um, they're a much bigger district. They spent about $550,000 a year on electricity uh, prior to joining the array. So, uh, but it's just an uh, example of, this is very similar to what the Hamden array would be like. And that's it for me, unless people have questions, I'd be happy to, to answer any questions that you may still have. Um. <clears throat> do you want to do you want to talk a little bit about process for next steps? Sure. So um, typically the way it works with school districts that I've worked with um, is that, you know, like a facilities committee will decide, yeah, we think this sounds good or no, we don't. And then they recommend it go to the full board for, for a, a, a board presentation and vote. Um, and um, Aga Dixon is the lawyer from Drummond and Woodsum that has worked actually with us on most schools use Drummond and Woodsum. So Aga's vet, vetted these um, contracts many times over. We have pretty much a standard agreed upon contract now because it makes it easy for her and it makes it easy for us. Um, and so what I would say, uh, a, a me important message to the board is that um, these contracts have been reviewed for being um, advantageous for school districts. She's your lawyer, not ours. And she has um, worked, worked the language to be in a place where she feels like it's, um, it's good language for schools. So the process can be, be pretty streamlined. Sometimes boards will want to actually have Aga come and review the contract with them and talk talk through the different parts. Other times boards will just say, you know, we we agree with the concept. We're going to let our superintendent um, and our you know operations director work through uh, the process, finalize the process with with you know the lawyer's consent. So there's a variety of ways to do it. Like I said, this this actual array does have a time sensitive nature to it. So I would say, you know, if, if you can move it forward, if you're comfortable with the idea and you want the board to consider it, you should move it forward relatively quickly to your board. I don't think the opportunity will be here in August or September. Um, but again, I think you're in a good place to be able to fit into this array if your process is you know, from here to your board um, to, you know, um, within a typical time frame of, you know, your next board meeting or soon thereafter. All right. Um, do you have any questions, Michelle? Um, yeah, I don't really think I do, Louie. Um, I mean, I think you pretty much covered it and you're, this is more your area. I'm just kind of listening to everything. Yeah, if you, Michelle, if you have any questions or concerns, don't hesitate to send um, questions to your superintendent or to, to Louie here and um, be happy to answer them. Also, our website has all of our school and municipal projects on it. Our non it's listed as nonprofit and, um, and it also has, you know, a, a lot of um, uh, additional information. Like I think I put in um, the client portal, Louis, the net energy billing frequently asked questions and um, some other documents. So it, you know, if there are any questions, you know, feel free to send them my way. Uh, you know, I encourage you to check out our website because we have a lot of good projects on there. And um, you can also share that client portal with any of the board members or people that are interested in kind of seeing some of that extra doc those extra extra documents. Okay. Okay, great, thanks. Yeah, nice uh, to be able to 
uh, speak with you both and, and share uh, the opportunity. And like I said, if you think that this would be advantageous for the district, we'd be thrilled to have you join us uh, in the Hampton Array. All right, well, I appreciate it, Tina. All right. Thank you. All right, thank you. Thank you, Ms. Tina. Yeah, take care, have a great day. All right, you, you too. too. So, Louis, I'm assuming next steps would be just to talk to Josh and then bring it to the board for discussion. Yeah, one more presentation from uh, Matt here um, from Novell Energy as well. Oh, okay, perfect. I'm sorry, I didn't realize that. Yeah. Awesome. Um, do you need, can you, can you, can you, can you, yeah, let me, no, this battery just died. Oh, it does. <laughs> let me send you the link. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's just it's just a Zoom. Yeah, sure. Let's see, have you got the meeting ID or something too? I can. Yeah. I... And I think Erica's on now as well. Yes, I just noticed that. Yes, hi. I'm, I apologize for being late. I'm here. Just sent it. So you should be getting it. Okay. Uh, the next um, presentation will be Matt Dovenberg. Yeah, nice. From uh, Novell Energy. Uh, basically offering the same, you know, similar, similar uh, solar presentation that we just heard. Matt's just trying to link up his Zoom to share his screen to do his presentation. I've gotten it, yeah. yeah. So, just refreshing it again here. Oh, here we go. All right. Are these mics on? Yeah. Okay. I might, I'll try, I'll just mute myself here. I think so that way it yeah. uh, doesn't yeah. echo. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Are you okay if I take my hat? That's yeah. Okay, can you guys hear me okay? Yes. Okay, there's there's no echo or anything, just double check in there. No, no. Okay, perfect. We we did it. Um, let me pull up my presentation here. Share the screen here. So I'm I'm Matt, I work with Novel Energy. Um, we also do the community solar farms as well. Second here. Okay. There we go. Perfect. So um, just giving some background on us to, to start here. Oh. Um, we are family owned. Um, we're based out of Minnesota. Our CEO is actually a fifth generation cattle farmer. Um, you know, and so it, he worked on Wall Street for a number of years in the investment banking side and the renewable energy sector saw this opportunity and moved back home. And initially we started doing, you know, projects for residential folks, you know, whether it's on the roof or ground mount systems for farmers. We've since kind of transformed into the larger community scale projects just because we're able to help more people. Um, you know, we're not limited based on roof sizes or, or uh, ground property space, things like that. So, um, we are based out of Minnesota. You know, we put up the first four programs or four uh, solar farms in the Excel area in the state of Minnesota. And 
we're actually probably one of the largest developers in the country with that's probably over 150 megawatts now of community solar farms developed. Um, you know, and a lot of times just with our agriculture background, we typically work with agriculture communities. So uh, myself in particular, I've spent the last seven months up in the county um, talking with a bunch of folks up there, you know, whether it's towns and schools or farmers, or businesses, homeowners, um, you know, everyone is eligible to participate in the net energy billing program. The only caveat is you have to be in that same utility area as the uh, solar farm. So we do have projects throughout the entire state, um, you know, stuff up in First and Main Public District, First and Bangor Hydro, and Central Main Power. So then that's one of the reasons why we're out here in Maine is because of that third bullet point. Um, and I'm sure most of you are familiar with this by now, but that third bullet point talks about those that do join get what's called a solar bill credit, and that goes directly onto your First and Power bill. Um, and that's what we're taking advantage of, of here um, with our community solar projects. And so just how that, you know, kind of big picture works, if we put the panels up out in a field somewhere, typically we lease the land from a landowner, um, all that energy gets produced, runs to the grid, those solar bill credits could show up onto those, you know, whether it's a business or home that has joined up, they get those credits and it's from those credits that we're guaranteeing 15% savings um, for, for the school here. So we also offer the same for, for homes as well, 15% uh, savings there. Okay, so this is just, uh, you know, a quick overview of um, the specific, um, what's the right word I'm looking for here, the specific proposal, I guess, for the school. Um, I've already received the usage reports from Verse and Power. I've, talked with Louie before and, and Josh, I'd encourage him to reach out and get things going. So all the numbers you've seen here are, um, are in fact particular to the, the school there. So okay, you just kicked me off, so I was concerned that, so you'll have to come with me again. Okay. Um, so overall, you know, it's, it's free to join, it's guaranteed savings of 15%. There's no production risk, um, you know, in terms of the school, school's not invested in anything, right? It's, it's entirely free to join. If we put the whole solar farm together and for whatever reason, it doesn't work, if it you know, gets struck by lightning, something like that, the school would still have power. You know, you'd be paying your bills as you are right now type deal. So, um, you know, we use the same infrastructure that's already there. There's no actual change to how you're getting your electricity. Um, you know, and you also have that opportunity to kind of be a leader in clean energy. You know, we can, we've worked with some marketing programs um, as well. You know, we offer a community partnership with folks that are joined up with our program as well. Um, it's just kind of a nice referral bonus that, um, you know, we provide kickbacks to for those that um, kind of spread the word for us. So initially it's a 10 year term with us. There is a two year replacement period um, as well. And again, it's a 15% discount savings there. So these numbers here are all sized up at actually 60% of your annual usage. So following talking with Louie, uh, I know the school has a negotiated rate of, of power and typically we size folks at 80%. However, due to that, um, you know, to that negotiated rate, we downsized you a little bit extra. Again, leaving the school a little bit of buffer room um, as well, just in the school's best interest. So over the right now, that first bullet point, you'll see the number 394, 522 right there. That's the number of kilowatt hours um, being sized at 60% of your annual usage right there. And again, that's just pulled right from the um, Versus portal there. That solar bill credit value is at 20.2 cents for every kilowatt hour that comes off of those panels. And with that times that by the 394,522, we expect there to be a credit value of $79,728. And this is over the course of one year. So that's what we expect that credit to be applied to on the bill. The subscription is 15% less than that solar credit rate. So which is 17.1 cents there for the same number of kilowatt hours, um, which turns into $67,769. So basically, instead of paying Versant 
$69,728.67,769 gets directed to us, leaving the school with almost $12,000 in savings just in the first year. So I do wanna point out that that first bullet point again, that solar bill credit value of 20 cents, um, that is set by the main PUC each year. And the nice part is if that goes up or it goes down, we just mimic that movement. So the school is always at a 15% discount for all of those credits that we help the school receive. So any questions so far with, with this? I guess I have a question about the 60% versus an 80%. Uh, how does that play into what our, because our, our rate is up in November, yeah, which was a very low rate. We're gonna be paying a lot more. Yeah. Um, how does that factor in? I guess I, I guess I expect the school to still have a negotiated rate once that right. term is up. So it's probably, it'll, you'll probably end up paying higher than mm -hmm. um, what you were, unfortunately. Um, but we do expect that to be lower than the typical standard offer. Right. Is that fair in yeah. assuming? Yeah. So just knowing that, um, financially, we want to make sure that you're, you know, you getting everything, using everything that you're getting. Mm -hmm. We don't want the school to be left have leftover solar bill credits over the course of 12 months, because that means the school is paying for credits that it's not necessarily using. Right. So by downsizing you a little bit further than the traditional 80% annual usage number, it just gives that school a little bit more of a buffer room um, for that usage fluctuation. Okay. Yeah. So again, it's, you know, we're happy to, we've had some, some schools say, hey, bump us up to 90% of our usage or max us out or keep us at 80. Uh, a lot of that, you know, does depend on the school. Ultimately, it's the school's decision. But just from our perspective, with keeping the school's best interest in mind, we advise you to go at 60% of your annual usage because of that negotiated rate. So this, this one here looks at you know, what the production looks like over the course of you know, one year. You can see those orange bars are the solar bill credits. The blue is the subscription payments, and you're always 15% less than that over the course of the year. So we will produce the most in the summer months, you know, like just longer days, more sunlight hours there. Um, and those credits do carry over month to month. So if we produce a bunch in the summertime when school's out, you know, we expect those credits to get gobbled up um, in the winter months, you know, November, December, when we're not producing as much. But we like to show exactly how we're getting those numbers. Um, you know, so this breaks down how it looks over the course of one year. And this next slide looks at over the course of 20 years, you know, the solar farm itself is a 20 year project. Um, but, you know, we initially have a 10 year term with you. Um, so over 10 years, you're looking at saving a total of $127,938, which is a substantial amount of, of uh, money, you know, to have simply by joining again with no out of pocket costs or no investment on the school side. So um, however you use that money is obviously up to the school, um, whether it's, you know, teachers, you want to put a putting green down a hallway or something like that, that's, that's up to you guys uh, there. So um, any questions with this so far? Okay. We do include, you know, some of those environmental factors as well. You know, what's your offsetting with the su subscription? you know, of that 394,522 kilowatt hours, just showing, you know, again, what you're offsetting between the oil and coal and get gallons of gasoline. So there is that kind of win-win area of, you're helping your bottom line, you're also helping the environment, you know, and honestly, both, both of my teacher, or both of my parents were teachers. And so I think there's a lot of different ways that you could incorporate some of the solar stuff into the curriculum. You know, that's again, kind of conversation down the road, but whether it's math or science or business classes, I think there's a lot of relevance there. So just kind of cool to see how that could be, you know, included in the future. So overall, you know, just hitting those benefits again, it's a guaranteed 15% savings on all those credits that you receive from Versa Power. You're not changed, you can see any change to how you're actually getting the electricity. Um, and you are promoting renewable energy for, you know, both the state of Maine and your local community as well. 
So the next steps here, we're in that first stage of just reviewing that proposal. Um, typically, uh, you know, I come in and talk with the full school board as well and, you know, answer any questions they might have. Um, Louis got my contact info as well, and I'm happy to um, share it here at the end. Yep, there you go. So if anyone has any questions, you know, either now or later on, that's my contact info. That's my cell phone. So calling, texting, um, you know, we're happy to help. We've worked with a bunch of schools up in the county. Um, I've started up there. I've been up there for probably the last six or seven months, and I'm just starting to make my way a little bit further south. But I can tell you, um, Easton schools, Ashland schools, Mars Hill schools, um, Frenchville, um, I'm missing a couple there. Uh, RC50, Southern University Community Schools, uh, Caswell. There's uh, there's a handful of them there, you know, just off the top of my head that we are working with, you know, and have joined our program already. So, um, yeah, I guess I'll open it up at this point to any sort of questions or comments. I have a question on whether, um, so the schools say up north that have joined, mm -hmm. I mean, I know there's a, a, we've read the law change in September for projects that aren't been back or ready to go. Um, do you have anything, you know, in the works south of there currently that would not fall under that new law change? New law of the, of the, five megawatt type stuff there or which which law are you because there's been a few handful of changes yes um, um supposedly there's one in set that project's not starting before september um um are going to be subject to some changes yeah yeah and so we've we've been on top of that so all of our stuff up north is done with civil work um some of the projects we have down here in bangor hydro um I've started civil work as well. There wasn't a clear cut, uh, you know, item of you have to have civil work done or you have to have it mechanically complete or it's operating. So there's a little bit of gray area there. That is something our company is focused on is, um, you know, obviously starting as much as we can mm -hmm. with all that. I will tell you within the next, between now and the end of August here, and this is some company insider info here, um, we plan on having 85 megawatts worth of energy throughout the state of Maine, um, either started or finished by the end of August. So some of those, you know, are projects that we're developing, you know, from start to finish. Um, others are projects that we've acquired from the areas as well. Um, recently, there's also been, I'm not sure if, you know, how up to date, you know, with the solar stuff everyone is, but there's um, been some tariffs on the panels where the price of panels, if they're coming from Cambodia, Malaysia, a handful of other places, um, they're now about 250% higher than what they were before, which is detrimental to a lot of solar companies. Um, luckily for us, we were able to adapt and adjust and kind of pivot prior to that, where we are now getting most of our panels uh, that are you know coming in are from India. Um, and we also have some still made here in the U.S. as well, but um, thankfully we, you know, just got kind of lucky and we were on top of it and we're able to adjust. So that won't affect us and our timelines as much. Where we do expect other projects to fall out um, throughout all the major utilities in the area. Um, you know, again, it's that that's just our expectations. Again, I don't, you know, other companies could be in the same boat as us. They may not be that just passed along from what our company-wide meeting executives have said. So what would you say would be an anticipated, say we decided to move forward with this, when would be yeah. the anticipated, we would start to see savings kind of date? You see savings probably about a year from now. Yeah. So to, to give you a, a good ballpark there, um, you know, we're always, I'd much rather under promise and over deliver than the other way around. Um, you know, I could, Tell you there's a chance by the end of this year the school could be on but again i'd rather give you a real more realistic timeline of probably about a year from now benefits of um 
10 year contract, five year contract, uh, 20 year contract. I mean, that's kind of what we're seeing is 10 and 20 year contracts. Yes. Yeah. Um, can you speak anything towards that? Yeah. So, I mean, I guess that's just the kind of the way that we operate our company. Standard is a 10 year term. There's a two year replacement in there where basically, if there's, you know, if we have a bunch of people waiting in line to get into a program after 10 years and someone wants out, we bump them out to shuffle the next person in. If there's no one waiting in line, that's where we ask for a little bit of a buffer time for us to come find a replacement for you. Um, with that being said, I can tell you we've never had any business or person voluntarily leave our program because they weren't saving or things weren't going as we said they would. You know, um, We've had four people leave, but they all moved out of the area, so they're ineligible there. Right. Um, regarding the time lengths, you know, 10 versus 20 years, in, in my opinion, you know, shorter is better. It leaves you with a little bit more flexibility. Um, you know, and, you know, that being said, there's, there is a, some of that accommodating stuff on one hand. And then on the other hand, we need to have a little bit of security on our side of, Hey, we're helping you save 15% every single year on your electricity. You're not invested at all. There's no cost out of your pocket. Knowing that you're going to be with us for a little while helps us, you know, right. sure. security wise. So uh, are there options at the end of those 10 years to continue? Absolutely, yeah. We, we traditionally go with the no news is good news. You know, we just would auto renew it and keep it going. Um, you know, obviously at the end of those 10 years, you know, we still have a bunch of contact with you as well. Um, and at any point in time in those first 10 years, we do have, uh, there's a piece in there where you can transfer it at any point in time. So if you know, a school down in Trenton or a business in Bangor or someone here locally needs savings or wants to try to be included. And we can always transfer a portion of the subscription over to them as well as, you know, trying to keep that community local feel good stuff, stuff going. So we have some of those options built in, um, you know, on top of that, this doesn't really apply to the school, but there's, you know, if you move out of the area, the sale of business, we, have those clauses built in because we're we're family owned, you know, we get it, life happens, you know, things happen. So we want to be accommodating, but also have a little security on our side. Any other questions? I think I'm all set at this time. Perfect. Well, thank you guys so much for, uh, you know, let me talk with you. I uh, really appreciate it. Um, yeah, if anything pops up between now and then, just feel free to reach out anytime and we'll go from there. Great, thank you. Thank you. Thanks you guys. Um, and uh, we will set our next meeting, discuss uh, the outcomes of these presentations. Um, and there, you know, with no further comments, we will adjourn this Buildings and Grants Committee meeting. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. I think I'm going to go Siri. You want me to end it? Yeah, I can. Okay. Must have, because I think I was the host and then kicked. Oh, it's a smart board.